What's up, YouTube? This is Smitty here to do a video about hair loss. And not that I lose my hair or I'm losing hair, but my hair is still on top. And let's see, I probably see it more than other people do. My hair is thinning and I'm in my 50s and I don't think I'm going to lose my hair. However, my father didn't have hair on his head there. And my grandfather, who was a picture here in the 1900s, you know, didn't have hair. Bit, right and you may have been probably in these 30s or 40s my point is uh i think there are some things that we can do to prevent it and there are some things that we can do from natural foods that we can uh utilize to help prevent hair loss i don't know that much about it i'm not saying that i do but i do know of this uh one thing called minoxidil and that helps prevent hair loss and i find some interesting uh reports about some of the mechanisms action so what did i do i asked my friendly chat gtp enabled app um like what supplements may enhance the effectiveness of minoxidil so i asked my friendly chat gtp enabled app quality i to ask some questions about minoxidil and how it works right so i asked quality ai to cite some relevant sources in MLA format about some supplements that may enhance the effectiveness of minoxidil so we have three supplements right biotin zinc and iron so if you didn't know, biotin, which is a B vitamin that is essential for healthy hair growth, studies have shown that biotin supplementation can improve hair thickness and reduce hair loss. The source is Joab 2019. Zinc. Zinc is an important mineral that plays a role in hair growth and repair. Studies have shown that zinc supplementation specifically can improve hair density and reduce hair loss. Joab 2019. Iron. Iron is another uh, supplement you can take. Iron is essential for healthy hair growth and as it helps to deliver oxygen and nutrients to hair follicles. Studies have shown that iron supplementation can improve hair growth and reduce hair loss in women with iron deficiency. Uh, the, the source here is from 2017 from Glennis. It's a double blind placebo controlled study evaluating the effect, efficacy of an oral supplementation in women with self perceived thinning hair. And that was that first question I got. And it, I'm going to go into the second question about minoxidil. So I asked my friendly chat GTP and they will have Qual AI describe the mechanisms by which biotin might enhance the effectiveness of minoxidil and the site relevant sources in MLA format. The mechanisms by which biotin might enhance the effectiveness of minoxidil are not fully understood. It comes out and says that right in the beginning. However, biotin is known to play a critical role in the metabolism of keratin, which is the key component of hair. Biotin also supports the production of energy by the hair follicles, which is essential for hair growth. True of 2019 is the source. Additionally, biotin has been shown to improve the strength and elasticity of hair, which may help to reduce hair breakage and improve hair thickness. Uh, Zempleni et al. 2019. And those are my sources. And so I went on to ask another question. I asked my friendly chat TTP enabled app about zinc, right? And this is what it said. Similar question, the mechanisms by which zinc might enhance the effectiveness of minoxidil are not fully understood. Similar response in the beginning. However, zinc is also known to play a role, an important role in hair growth and repair. Zinc is required for the synthesis of DNA and RNA, which are essential for cell division and hair growth. Zinc also helps to maintain the structural integrity of proteins, including keratin, which is a key component of hair. Through a 2019. Additionally, zinc has been shown to have anti-inflammatory effects, which also may help to reduce inflammation in the hair follicles and promote hair growth. Agua NL 2016, and these are my sources. And I asked Qua AI a similar question about iron. And the response very similar. Iron is essential for healthy hair growth, and it also says as it is required for the production of hemoglobin which carries oxygen to the hair follicles iron also plays a role in the synthesis of dna and rna which are responsible for cell division and hair growth Glennis 2017 source iron deficiency can lead to hair loss and decrease hair growth as the hair follicles are not receiving enough oxygen and nutrients to support healthy growth iron supplementation has been shown to improve hair growth and reduce hair loss in women with iron deficiency. Mechanisms by which iron might enhance the effectiveness of minoxidil are not fully understood. However, it is possible that iron supplementation may help to improve the delivery of oxygen and nutrients to hair follicles. 
which could promote hair growth. Additionally, iron has been shown to have antioxidant effects, which may help to protect the hair follicles from damage and promote healthy hair growth. Trost et al. 2006. And these are my sources. One thing I will say, though, it sounds that a uh, thing that's running through this thing is kind of familiar. It's about anti-inflammation and about uh, oxygen delivery, especially in iron. I noticed as a triathlete when I did triathlons, if I ate a steak on a Friday and then I took the weekend off from running, right? I did still went 40 to 80 miles on Saturday, Sunday, but I went riding, went running on Monday. My rhythm was off. And then later on, I come to find out that B-complex vitamins help to uh, take homocysteine out of the bloodstream or basically help pour protein in your blood to where it needs to go in the body. And um, I'm deducing that B-complex vitamins allow room for B-complex vitamins allow more room for oxygen in the blood by taking protein out, right? So even the fact that you're consuming a lot of protein might be good for hair growth. If you're B-complex and vitamin deficient, if you're deficient in some B-complex vitamins, you may have a hard time with hair growth because you have your blood uh, full of protein. And ideally, you would want more oxygen in your blood to be able to deliver uh, the nutrients to where it needs to go. And that's one problem that I find that's significant with bodybuilding culture because um, the co- the focus is on consuming protein, not necessarily porting it once it's in your system, right? So the first step is to consume the protein. The second step is to get to where it needs to go as far as the muscle and B-complex vitamins do a great job in helping that. And if your breathing is labored, for example, like when I'm doing my you know six minute miles when I'm trying to run, my breathing is labored is probably because B complex vitamins um, are deficient or insufficient to the 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 port the protein to where you need to go. And I find often that B complex vitamins help me perform better. So I put two and two together and that's the solution I got. And I asked more questions um, because I know that it's suggesting that minoxidil is a vasodilator. Off, oftentimes, caffeine is characterized as being the vasodilator. And I wanted to be able to see, you know, can coffee and minoxidil actually operate in the same way? I got some interesting answers. So I asked my friendly chat GT being able to have quality AI to compare and contrast the vasodilatory effects of minoxidil with caffeine and to cite relevant sources in MLA format. And this is what I got. Monoxidil and caffeine are both known to have vasodilatory effects, which means that they can widen the blood vessels and increase blood flow to the scalp. However, the mechanisms by which they achieve the effect are different. Monoxidil is believed to work by opening potassium channels in the smooth muscle cells of blood vessels, which leads to relaxation of the muscle and dilation of blood vessels. This dilation allows for increased blood flow to the scalp, which can promote hair growth. True 2018. Caffeine, on the other hand, works by inhibiting the activity of bifidiesterase, an enzyme that breaks down cyclic adenosine monophosphate. Cyclic adenosine monophosphate is a signaling molecule that can help to dilate blood vessels and increase blood flow. By inhibiting inhibiting phosphodiesterase, caffeine can increase the levels of CAMP in the blood vessels which can lead to vasodilation and increased blood flow to the scalp. Fisher et al. 2014. In terms of their effectiveness, studies have shown that both minoxidil and caffeine can improve hair growth and reduce hair loss in people with androgenetic alopecia. However, minoxidil is the only medication that is FDA approved for treatment for hair loss, while caffeine is often used as an ingredient in hair care products and supplements. I didn't know caffeine was used in care products or something. And here are my sources right here. Bloom, uh, Daddy, 20, 2007, and Fisher from 2014. When I, asked the, when I asked for the mechanisms, something really interesting that I found in this series of queries that I asked about the minoxidil mechanism of action, right? And so it says minoxidil, minoxidil is believed to work by opening potassium channels and smooth muscle cells of the blood vessels. Wow, so anything that opens up potassium channels, salads, like anything that's green leafy vegetables might open up potassium channels, right? Potassium is typically going to be intracellular while magnesium is intracellular and extracellular. So whenever you have potassium, you're going to have magnesium there. And so 
the ion channels um, really play a role, I guess, in how hair grows. And by opening potassium channels, uh, you get better um, dilation of blood vessels, right? And so that's why I looked up caffeine because caffeine also plays a role in which kind of leads me to a different topic. But, you know, whenever I consume a salad with a coffee, I have an amazing effect. And that's all I know. All I know is that when I consume coffee with salad, you know, I have a salmon salad with a coffee, the effect is enhanced. I didn't know that um, the dilation of blood vessels was like compounded. Um, you should try it. I know it sounds kind of wonky, but it works for me. Probably works for other people too. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you want to help reaching your fitness goals or wellness goals, seek a fitness professional. If you want help from me, there's resources in this video on this YouTube channel and at iheartkings.com. I'm Smitty. I hope you reach your fitness goals and I'll talk to you in the next one.